This is the 2012 Adams Photons and Nuclei paper, which has now been replaced by Modern Physics Internal. Still might be helpful for you. Question 1, energy from stars. We've got a graph missing, but the graph shows the data on the left-hand side, and we don't need the graph for this. Let's scroll down. We've, we've In that table, we've basically got a bunch of uh, nuclides, um, or just elements, um, and their binding energy per nucleon. Okay, so they range, they don't go in order of any particular thing. Um, they're going up an increasing size of a nucleon. A, use the information on the table and the graph to answer the following questions. In the above list, nickel and iron have the highest binding energy per nucleon. Explain which nuclide on the list has the highest total binding energy. Okay, so binding energy per nucleon is the number, uh, is the amount of energy required for a single nucleon to be removed. But we're after the total, okay, the total binding energy, which is the total energy required to separate all of the nuclei, nucleons. So that's going to be the one which has the highest multiple of the number of nucleons uh, times by the binding energy per nucleon. So that'll give us the total. You can see how this works as a, a mathematical calculation. Number of nucleons times binding energy over number of nucleons. It's going to give us the total binding energy. And in this case, it's going to be uranium because it's got considerably more uh, nucleons in it, even though the uh, binding energy per nucleon is a little bit lower. Okay, the highest appears to be manganese, Mn. Um, no, iron, there we go. Iron and nickel. Oh, it says it in the question anyway. Um, but iron and nickel have got uh, around about a quarter the number of nucleons, but the binding energy is not less than a quarter, uh, uh, not that quarter extra in the other way. You, you work that through. Okay. So the answer is uranium. Part 2. Explain how stars, which are composed mostly of hydrogen, can release huge amounts of energy. So again, this relates to the binding energy. Um, so the binding energy of hydrogen is um, zero or as low as it possibly can be. That's because it's a single H1, is a single proton sitting by itself with an electron, I guess, but we don't need to worry about electrons for these. Um, so that means uh, it doesn't require energy, any energy to separate it from other nucleons because it's all by itself. So it's got the, um, the lowest possible binding energy, or we could call it the highest uh, net energy. Um, mass energy, that sort of thing. So uh, it's going to the hydrogen, uh, let's just do it this way, two hydrogens that will fuse to a helium um, and what we're talking about here, the explanation, is that the total binding energy on the left hand side, or the, it's not a chemical reaction, but the, the reactants um, the total energy of the reactants, total binding energy of the reactants, is less than the total binding energy of the helium. Okay, and that sounds a bit funny because you're trying to get energy out, but remember the binding energy is the energy required to separate. So if the helium nuclei has a higher total binding energy, it means um, it's given off more energy not that it contains more energy. And of course, uh, the stars being mostly composed of hydrogen and under gravitation, uh, that's enough to cause the fusion reactions to occur. And that, that total binding energy uh, difference between uh, the hydrogen and the helium is released in the form of heat energy. Okay, part three. If a star reaches a stage where it's formed a core rich in iron and nickel, it suddenly stops burning. Explain why this happens. It's because iron and nickel, L E E L, E L doesn't matter. You can, yeah, I think um, you can look. It doesn't matter. Um, it, it happens because iron and nickel have the highest binding energy per nucleon, per nucleon, not total. Okay, highest binding energy per nucleon. That makes them the most energetically stable. So the energy is stable. It means it requires more energy to separate the nucleons than it would uh, produce energy um, in any fusion reaction. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> I'm not writing this down obviously because it takes too long in a video, 
but there's so much more energy required to separate them than you will get out of them. In fact, all you need is is to have just a little bit more energy required to separate the nucleons um, than it will uh, produce in, in the reaction. Um, and that's also, in, in, interestingly enough, why the, the sun develops a uh, an iron kind of crust around it. Um, NASA uh, photography, spectral analysis and all that kind of stuff um, has shown that there is a uh, an iron uh, crust on the sun. Um, but anyway, that's the idea, that's the main idea. Moving on, B. When a star has used up much of its hydrogen and uh, helium, it begins burning carbon. One of the reactions to occur is this. Calculate the energy released in this reaction um, and hence determine the mass deficit in the reaction. Okay, so uh, the energy released in, in the reaction will be the difference from the left hand side. So if we have the energy on the left hand side and we calculate that, and then we um, take the energy on the right hand side, and then we're after the difference in energy, which will be. Um, the uh, final minus the initial, so energy on the final is the right hand side minus the energy on the left hand side um, and then uh, we would use um, because we're trying to find the mass deficit from E equals mc squared we're rearranged for the mass deficit being E over c squared, c squared being the speed of light so the only thing that remains is how do we work out um, the energy here and the answer is, I believe, we have to go all the way back up to the binding en energies uh, per, uh, per nucleon for our reaction, uh, things we're after up here. So we're after carbon, which has binding energy per nucleon 12.29, so we'd have to times that by 12, and then we have to times that by 2 for the products, because there's two of those um, in there. Okay, and then, uh, that's, so that would be the left-hand side, would be that. And then we'll do the right hand side, which is going to be uh, neon uh, and let's see, where is it? There's neon, so we'd have to do 20 times 12.85. And I forgot what the other one was, but you could find it and work through. That's how you would calculate that. And your final answer, helium, there we go. Um, so your final answer um, is going to be, let's see, 8.13 times 10 to the minus. 10 if I'm just reading it off the marking schedule um, and that's in kilograms okay, but that's how you do it